and today it's about 415,000. And the interest rates have gone so high that nobody can really afford those homes. And the banks are very, being very tight on cash because the high interest rates have devalued their treasury bills and they, they need to hoard their reserve currency. So they're not even, you know, they're not even putting money out into the communities for businesses or for homes. Um, meanwhile, there are 17 million, there's 500,000 homeless people in this country and the price of homes is now putting pressure on the rental market. So the price of rents are, are going up and more and more people are losing their homes and they're losing their apartments and rent, rental properties and they're now 500,000 active homeless in our country. And ironically, there's 17 million housing units that are empty. So, um, you know, we need, you know, the, the, uh, the inflation is the result of something that's going to be very, very, it's going to take a long time to be, bring it under control. The inflation is the result of all this okay. spending, particularly the spending on the war, and that, which was, uh, you know, we've spent $8 trillion on wars since 2001, and we spent $16 trillion on COVID lockdowns. Um, and that's $24 trillion, and that, you know, they have to print the money, and what happens when you just print money? is it is a tax on the poor that is levied through inflation and that's what's happening now we're being we are being robbed of our value of our assets in order to pay for the iraq war and the ukraine war and the lockdowns and you know obviously the first thing we need to do is to unwind the empire and bring that money home and you know, stop spending. We're, we're spending 1.3 trillion dollars on our military and national security combined. And we were promised after the Soviets took the wall down and the Soviet Union collapsed that our military expenditures would go from six trillion dollars a year to a six six hundred billion dollars a year to two hundred billion, and that was considered adequate to protect our country. Instead, they went up to 1.3 trillion, and uh, and you know we need to wind it down. We need to reinvest in the middle class in this country. We need to make it America, where people can live the American dream, which means working hard and buying your own home. Unfortunately, most Americans are living paycheck to paycheck, and 57 percent of Americans couldn't even put their hands on a thousand dollars if they have an emergency, much less buy a home. Uh, so the American dream is being robbed from us. Uh, the people who live inside the Beltway don't seem to care. Uh, they, you know, they've got us addicted to these continual wars, and uh, and that's where the money is going. We need to do that, and we need to solve the chronic disease epidemic, which is the other big expense. And with chronic disease, you know, our medical expenses are four point three trillion, and chronic disease eighty percent of that. And we've gone from having, we have the worst chronic disease in the world, uh, uh, burden of the world. And that, you know, during COVID, we had the highest body count. And, and part of the reason for that is we have the highest uh, chronic disease burden. People were dying of chronic disease, not infection. They were dying of obesity. They were dying, dying of asthma. They were dying of diabetes. And, you know, the CDC even admitted that the average death from COVID had 3.8 chronic diseases. And what, what, what I'm going to do as president is clean up the chronic disease epidemic. You know, we know, we know the things that are causing it. And we need to protect Americans. That is the worst threat to our country right now. And, you know, it, it's just debilitating our children. And, um, and we need to stop that. And that is going to save us money. And ultimately, it will bring inflation under control. But, um, you know, they said that is like, it's a longer term effort. And I, what I'll do as president is I'll try to, I'll increase the amount of vouchers for HHS Title V vouchers for, um, for new homes. So the young people and people who are out of their homes will have an easier time affording uh, homes. And that's, but that's a short term fix. Over the long term, we just need to stop 
bankrupting our country and bankrupting the middle class, paying for these unnecessary wars. Thank you. Um, a related question from Becky Steffen in Alaska. How would you improve America's manufacturing in order to improve and streamline our national supply chain? Yeah, again, you know, what, what, what China has done is we, well, we spent $8.1 trillion in the last 20 years making bullets and bombs and then uh, destroying ports and homes and universities and roads. The Chinese have spent $8 trillion building universities, roads, hospitals in, in foreign countries and making deals with those countries. And, and what happened, and also building their industrial base at home, while we spent, you know, built Wall Street, they spent, uh, 20, they spent $250 billion building uh, 25,000 miles worth of high-speed rail. We need to upgrade our infrastructure to make it more compatible for industrialization. And we also, you know, not instead rejecting military power or, or financial power, economic power abroad, rather than military power. Today, because the, the Chinese have spent all that money building ports, rails, roads, etc., they are now the primary creditor in Latin, in every country in Latin America, and almost every country in Africa, and and what happens when they when they uh, when they do that credit? They build a road in those countries, they build bridges, they build a project, and when they do that, they send engineers abroad to help them construct it, and those engineers are trained in China, and now and they now have the infrastructure to actually build things in their country. They have the human infrastructure, and the human capacity. We have a real problem. Rice University used to graduate 20% of the engineers in the world. Today, it, it's less than 1%. And a lot of, when we want to go build a project in Latin America, like a new road, we do not have the engineers in our country who can do that anymore. We are turning into a third world country. And we are ripe for colonial control by countries like China. And we need to change, you know, everything comes down ultimately to changing that military policy and start uh, building, start bringing that money home, stop building billion dollar bombers that can't fly in the rain <laughs> and bring that money home and start building schools and, and roads and bridges and, uh, and rebuilding our communities and educating our children, cutting the cost of education and reinvesting in America, and that's what I'm going to do. Thank you so much. Right, we have another question from Jameson. How do we break through the cone of lies and censorship to appeal more to the Democratic voter base? Yeah, I, I, if you have ideas about that, please. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's hard to, it's, you know, we're communicating a lot, with people who listen to podcasts, with people um, who listen to Fox News, it's been very, very good to me. Um, but it's, uh, you know, we have a hard time reaching the, uh, the, the traditional Democrats who read the legacy news, watch CNN, watch MSNBC, and read the New York Times, and are not, um, you know, are not getting the truth. Um, and so, but you know, the weird thing is, there's a, despite, you guys all saw me slandered this week by the, you know, the most odious, hateful slander. I think you can say about somebody who's there an anti-Semite, and of course I'm not an anti-Semite. I've never they uttered an, an anti-Semitic um, phrase or word in my entire life. My policies on Israel are better than any other candidate. Um, but I'm called an anti-Semite because it's more, it's difficult for them to censor me now that I'm running for president. And so the way of, that they can continue to censor me is through targeted propaganda, or otherwise known as character assassination. You marginalize me, vilify me, make me look like a crazy person, so that nobody um, will uh, listen to me. And and it's hard, you know, that those kind of 
uh, definitions are painful. Most of the stuff they say about me does not affect me, but that those defina uh, defamations do. And you assume they're very damaging because a lot of people are upset and are saying, okay, you know, they're getting, of course, the DNC is spending tens of millions of dollars to send these hateful articles out to millions of Americans and, and you know, convince them that I'm this person. Um, uh, but um, the, uh, despite that, at the height of that, and before my congressional testimony, Harvard Harris did this poll, and it's a gold standard poll. It's 20, it's the best polling company in the country, Harris and Harvard. And it's uh, 2,600 people in the poll. I think it was 2,600, which is, you know, usually polls are from about 700 to 1,000. This is a really, really strong poll. And it showed my popularity to be higher than any other political candidate and anybody else that they measured, including people who aren't running, like Elon Musk. And uh, my favorability rating was 21 points at least ahead of anybody else. And my unfavorability ratings are the lowest. So this was encouraging to me because despite this, you know, this tsunami of, of, of ugly, ugly um, libels and slanders and defamations that are applied to me using the most hateful, odious, poisonous uh, uh, pejoratives that they can apply to me, somehow the American people are seeing through that. And people are, you know, not, people are not believing it. And that was very, very encouraging to me. So, so from Brick and Leanne Wall, what work will you do to get us back on track with our original constitution and what our founding fathers intended for this country? Well, the first thing I'll do on day one is I'll sign an executive order making it forbidding any federal official or any federal agency from censoring America's political speech. Second of all, I will revoke uh, President Obama's 2016 executive order that allows the CIA and other agencies to propagandize Americans, and I'll make that illegal again. Um, yes. I'll propose an amendment to RICO, uh, to make uh, censorship collusion between government officials and social media companies or media companies a RICO offense. Yes. So individuals can sue and then the victims of political. Thank you. Uh, wow. uh, I want my Facebook bag. <laughs> <laughs> I want to I see those. I propose to amend Section 30 um, of the Communications Act, 230 of the Communications Act, that make censorship of, of political speech illegal on the internet. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, and then I'm gonna uh, and I'm gonna do a lot of other stuff to make sure that <laughs> I'm gonna drain the swamps. <laughs> <laughs>
and you sign up to be a volunteer, you will get an invitation for how you can volunteer. All of you have amazing, unique talents, and we will find a way to utilize your talents and what you want to do for the Kennedy campaign. If you want to canvas, if you want to make phone calls, if you want to do graphics or design or whatever, like organizing volunteers, there's all kinds of things you, you can do. And we invite you to go to kennedy24.com today, right now. And if you want to see another event like this with Bobby, where you get to ask questions, you want to make this, you know, happen again, then please volunteer. And um, and we can, if we all do 24 hours for Kennedy 2024, that's one day to pave the way for truth in the White House. And we invite you to volunteer. We also invite you to donate $24 a month. It's actually on the website, it's 25, so you're doing that extra dollar for the processing thing. But $25 a month, and if we had, let's just say 1,230 people out there today, right now watching, do that every month. For the next 18 months, we would be raising over half a million dollars. And then if each one of us got three people to do that, I think y'all can handle that. You got 500 Facebook friends, right? You've got at least you know a dozen people in your circles we would be raising over $1.6 million just from this call tonight. So I invite you to do that because, you know, Bobby's not going to be getting money from Big Pharma and Big Ag and Big Oil. He needs us, just like that song that was put together by the wonderful volunteers and the praise that said, it's up to you, right? It's up to you. It's up to us. So we invite you to donate $24 a month. I'm doing that. I hope you'll do that. And, um, and you'll have three friends do that, and together we're raising over $1.6 million. So um, I'm just thrilled. I'm so excited. And I want to say a special shout out to my son, who's 20 years old, and he's here in the room, and he is paying his friends $10 to watch the first, the uh, 1995 <laughs> episode, Joe Rogan, right, with Bobby Kennedy? Yeah. And they're watching all three hours. And my son is a libertarian. So he's bringing, Bobby is bringing people together, and you can do that too. You can bring people together, invite them to watch that episode, donate $24 a month, and donate 24 hours of your time. Thank you so much. Amen. Thank you. Yeah, no more broken families. Thank you so much for those great ideas. 24 hours from every person on this call, $24 a month, $25 a month. Not a huge burden, but it all adds up, and the momentum keeps going. It's, it's actually more valuable to the campaign to have steady contributions than one big one. It's then money that they can count on. And, and money is important as much as popularity and volunteers. If you haven't signed up as a volunteer, as Zen said, please do. If you have ideas, write to volunteer at teamkennedy.com. And Melissa White, as Zen pointed out, is very active on the Slack channel for volunteers and will be involved with volunteers going forward. Right now, the field operations are really getting up and running, particularly in the early primary states. So there's big jobs for volunteers to do. And we do need you. And we're so grateful for all that you've done so far. Please stick with the campaign. Please contribute in your most your areas of, of expertise and what brings you joy. And uh, we will definitely be reconvening over the course of this historic campaign. Thank you all so much for joining us. And we'll see you again soon.